Hello and welcome to another lecture of the Programming Fundamentals with C Sharp course. Today we have an exciting topic. It will enable a bunch of new and more interesting examples that we can build. But for introduction, let me emphasize that this is part of a larger video series. I record my teaching at the HTL Leoning, which is a vocational college for computer science here in Austria. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, please check out the whole playlist. I will add a link up here somewhere and in the description field. And once you watched all the previous videos, you will be right here for the loops. Remember, this is a video series for people who have no prior programming experience and who would like to learn programming with C Sharp from scratch. And today we are going to cover loops, loops, loops. This is our topic today. Now, loops, what are loops? Loops are blocks of code where you add some kind of loop expression before or after it in order to repeat the block over and over again. C Sharp knows a bunch of different types of loops. Let me tell you about them. The first one is the do while statement. The do while statement executes the block one or more times. Please note one or more times, not zero or one, at least one time because the condition while this execute this while the condition is true, the condition is checked at the end of the statement. Okay, this is important. Do while checks at the end. That's an important one because the next statement is the while statement, the while loop, not the do while, but this is the while. And the while loop executes the block zero or more times because it checks the condition before it executes the code for the first time. That's an important one. Let's try to bring that into our real world. I could tell you do homework while the sun is still up there. When the sun is no longer there, you stop with your homework. If I say do homework while the sun is still up there, you have to do a little bit of homework and at the end, when you're done with the homework, you check is the sun still there and if it's still there, you start with the next piece of homework and you do it again and again and again until the sun has disappeared. But you do it at least once because the checking whether the sun is still up there, star, sun is still in the sky, it's still day and not night yet, will be done at the end of the, uh, of the program, of the, of the statement, of the block. The while statement is different. If I say while the sun is still in the sky and it's still day, do your homework, you first check is the sun in the sky. If the sun is not in the sky, you even don't start with the homework. Okay. So that is the big difference. Do while checks after the block has been executed for the first time and while checks before the code is executed uh, for the first time. You will see that in an example in a second. So just bear with me. You will understand it better once you see the code. And finally, the third one is a very exciting one. The for statement. It's the most flexible and powerful loop that we have in C Sharp. And it's a teeny tiny little bit of, um, of difficult. So therefore, uh, put it to the side. We will discuss it in a few minutes. First, let's focus on the simpler loops. Here you see a typical do while statement. See, in line one, we have a variable i and it has the value 10. And then we say do, we print the content of i and then we reduce i by one and at the end of the block we have the while statement. I will focus here on the loop. So the important thing is here we have 10 the check whether we have reached zero is done at the end of the block. So even if we would change i to zero at the very beginning, it would at least print zero and do the check at the end and end the program immediately. Understand what I mean? The while expression is evaluated at the end of the block, not at the beginning. So the program runs always at least once through the block. 
maybe often, maybe more often. We change i by 1, so 10 becomes 9, repeat, 10 becomes 8, uh, sorry, 9 becomes 8, repeat, 8 becomes 7, and so on, until 1 becomes 0, and then our while expression is no longer true, 0 is not greater than equal than 0, and the loop stops. So this is how a do-while statement looks like. If we try to change that one to a while loop, it looks a little bit different. There is no longer a do command, a do thing before the block here. We immediately start with a while. And the while was now shifted up at the beginning of the code block. Let me scroll back again. See, while is after the code block. And now, while is before for the code block and therefore the condition is checked before the code is executed. So if we would change i at the very beginning here to zero, this console write line will never be executed because the check here is done at the beginning of the, st of the code block. Okay, this is a very important one. So it can happen that the loop is never executed if this condition is never true. Well, if we start with 10, like you see it here, 10 is greater or equal 0? Of course it is. So the code is executed and 10 becomes 9. 9 becomes 8, 8 becomes 7, and so on. At one point, 1 becomes 0, we check the condition and we stop. So the big difference is when the checking is done after the first execution or before the first execution. And you have to choose. For some algorithms it's better to use the while and for some algorithms it's better to use the while loop which checks at the beginning. That's up to you. You are the coder, you are the programmer, that's up to you. You have to choose what fits best to your concrete problem that you are trying to solve. Let's do a little bit of exercising. You know mastery comes from practice so we have to do exercises here. Write a program that generates the following output and try programming it with while and then with do while. So use both loops and try to find out what the differences are. Now what is the output that I want you to implement? We have multiple levels here. Let's start with a relatively easy exercise. Print all numbers between 1 and 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then, second exercise, print all numbers between 1 and 10, but multiply each number by 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and so on and so on. Remember, solve this level with a while loop. If it works, change your code and make it a do while loop. You have to solve this level 1 with both types of loops. Now pause the video, try level 1. There will be a level 2 and a level 3, so get ready to make more difficult exercises, but for now pause the video and get back once you have successfully completed level 1. Great, you're back! So let's focus on level 2. Level 2 is a bit harder. In this case, I want you to print all numbers between 1 and 20 that can be divided by 3 without a remainder. 0 divided by 3 is 0 with remainder of 0, so you have to print 0. 1 divided by 3 is 0 with a remainder of 1, so therefore don't print it. Understand what I mean? So therefore the output should be 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. And do it with out, uh, do it with a while loop and do it with a do while loop. Okay? Both programs should print out the same, uh, s uh, same sequence of numbers. The second level 2 exercise is a sum of all numbers between 1 and 20 that can be divided by 3 without a remainder. So exactly the same as we had before, but now you should not print every single number, but you have to calculate the total. 0 plus 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15 plus 18. The result of your program should be 63. So try it and again, don't forget, don't cheat, while and do well. 
great, you are back. So, are you ready for level 3? Level 3 is a really interesting one. Level 3 is a very special sequence, the so-called Fibonacci sequence. It's a famous sequence of numbers and let me describe how this sequence works. I will zoom in so I can draw a little bit. It starts with two numbers, 0 and 1. And now the next number is always the sum of the two previous numbers. So in this case, 0 plus 1 and that will give us a 1. The next number will be the sum of the numbers before. So 1 plus 1 and that gives us 2. See? The next one will be um, 1 plus 2 and that will give us 3. The next one will give us 2 plus 3 and that will give us the 5 that you see here and so on. So let me give that here. So you always take two numbers and you add them for the next and then you take the next two numbers and that will give you that one and then the next two numbers and that will give you that one and so on and so on and so on and your job is to write the program with a while loop and then with a do while loop that prints the Fibonacci sequence for all numbers of up to 34 so that would be 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, as you see it here on the screen. This is kind of tricky. It's not that easy, especially if you are a beginner. So take your time, pause the video here and try to solve level 3. Have fun with it and come back once you have mastered this exercise. Great, you're back. So let's go on. I have a small tip for you. You might not know that already, there is a website out there which is great for such exercises as you have seen them just before. This website is called Wolfram Alpha. I don't know if you have ever heard from that. If not, take a little bit of time. You can follow the link here that will bring you to wolframalpha.com and then you can try a bunch, of, um, a bunch of things here. For instance, you could say something like this one. See, you just copy it and you put it here just like a, a search engine. And if I run this, Wolfram Alpha, it, it's a math genius. It will display a lot of interesting information about it. For instance, it will show the points on a, on a plot here. It will calculate the sum. It will calculate the average value and a lot of other things. But you can do even cooler things here. You can, for instance, plot a graph. See, this would be uh, y equals x to the power of 2. So let me show you what that means. So, oops, sorry, I have to copy that one and put it here. Here we are. And then you will see that Wolfram Alpha will immediately show you the, the math equation here and print everything here on the screen. So Wolf, whenever you have to deal with math, with, with numbers or equations and things like that, and you need to analyze or print or do something with it, Wolfram Alpha is really cool. There are a lot of examples that you can find here and the reason why I wanted to show you that is especially once the one thing that is prim uh, really interesting, you can ask Wolfram Alpha for famous number sequences. For instance here, it will tell you a lot about the Fibonacci sequence. You will see what the output is and you will see a lot of math magic, uh, how you generate this thing, really interesting. So you, if you are into math or if you have, have to solve um, math exercises, Wolfram Alpha might be your friend. So this is a little step to the side, uh, a really nice tool. If you do your programming homework, maybe sometimes Wolfram Alpha will help you. I hope this was interesting. Now at that point, you might be a little bit confused when to use while, when to use do while. You have seen that you can solve your exercises with both kinds of loops and it's really hard to decide. Um, the, it, it comes up to examples. It comes up to a little bit of practice and a little bit of experience. And therefore, how can we find out when to use what? And the answer is by practicing, of course, and then you will develop a feeling, you will get an, an intuition when to use what, you will understand from the nature of the algorithm that you are just programming, which one you use, to while or while. So let's take a, let's take a look at some of the examples. 
here. In this case, I am asking the user a question. The question is, enter your name or type quit to exit. You see that in line two. So we write console write line question, as you can see it here. Then we ask the user for the name and then we use a while loop, say hello name, ask the user again for the name and uh, uh, um, enter your name or type quit to exit. We read in again and this will be looped. See, this will be looped and looped and looped until or while the name isn't quit. Quit is this one here. You see, because we check at the beginning of the code block, we have to here do the asking and the read line twice. We need to ask the user at least once for the user's name, then we check, then we say hello and we have to ask the user again. This is necessary because if we would put this one, the while here, uh, if we put the while at the beginning, we have to first ask the user for something to check, right? Now how would it look like if we build exactly the same with a do while loop? The do while loop is different because now we don't check at the beginning. We can easily ask the user for his name or for quit to exit. But now we need to consider something else. What if the user types in quit? Now we have to combine the do while loop with an if loop in order to not print the name if the user entered quit. Because if she entered quit, we don't want to say hello quit and then exit the program. We really want to immediately exit the program. So you see the program two times, the same program, but it looks a little bit different. First, we do these two lines two times. In the second version, we have the disadvantage that we need an additional if. Which one do you like better? Both are fine. Both are okay. In my case, I personally would tend to the second option, to the do while loop. But it's perfectly fine if you prefer the first one. So that is the point that you should take away from this example here. It isn't always clear what to, what to use. You can achieve your goals with both options, do while and while. And we have to, of course, practice to uh, distinguish between two things and write algorithms that work in this way or work in the other way. Did you take a close look at the um, code that I've shown you in the previous example? Let me go back again. This one is important. Go here. Can you remember? Quick repetition. I used string constants here, see? And I used this string constants here and here to make my program easier to read. This is particularly important if we take a look at the first example because we are asking the question twice and we do not want to repeat ourselves. Therefore, please remember, we had that before in previous videos, string constants or general constants, avoid repeating yourself. When you have something like this, don't stupidly just copy the code, introduce a constant in order to not repeat yourself. So this is an important one, just a quick reminder why we use constants in these exercises. Have you seen in the previous example that I used these curly braces with the dollar at the beginning? Let me go back again so I can show you that one. Ah, uh, which one did I want to show? This one, this one. I wanted to show you this one. See, if I go here, you see here that I'm using the dollar and then suddenly here I'm using name. We have not seen that. Maybe you wondered already what is that? So far we have always written something like hello plus name. This is how we have written it so far. But now you're becoming more and more experienced. You're becoming more and more better coders, better programmers. So therefore I teach you additional tricks. This is a so-called template string. 
a template string starts with a dollar sign here at the beginning and in the middle of the template string we can use expressions in this case we use a variable name so what C sharp will do it will replace this part here the curly braces with the name with the content of the variable name this is why we call it a template because it has gaps in it and these gaps will be filled by the content of the variable same is true up here the question says enter your name or type quit and do you see the quit thing here is again in these curly braces so therefore it will take this text here and add it exactly here so this template strings are super super useful when you would like to insert the variable of a constant the value of a constant or a variable inside of a string that you for instance would like to print on the screen so remember that template strings let me go to the slide um, template strings are also often called as string interpolation both um, both words are are okay and remember they start with the dollar sign and then the expression is inside the curly braces and here you have a bunch of examples exactly those examples we had before and here you see what the difference is compared to what we have done so far I already told you that one instead of dollar hello curly brace name we have written so far hello plus name okay very well so whenever in the future you want to print something like that use a string interpolation also known as template string and you will be fine your code will be better structured that will be a really big step towards becoming a professional coder the for loop we're not going to start with the for loop today you already have practiced a lot with the while loop and the do while loop you have learned about template strings and so on I have to save something for future videos the for loop is a very interesting loop it's the most powerful loop I said that already so we will dedicate uh, a separate video just for the for loop because it's also a tiny teeny little bit complicated to understand but I'm very confident that together we will understand how the for loop works so for now thank you for watching thank you for exercising and don't forget mastery comes with practice so keep on coding write a lot of code and come back to the next video for today see you goodbye <laughs>